Hi, I'm Josh. I'm Julie. And I'm Marcus. And our presentation today is on sabermetrics, which is pretty much baseball. We're going to look at the salary, the batting average, and uh, the career length. So our main question was, uh, we were wondering if there was a correlation between a, a player's batting average and the amount of dollars that they earned um, for their lifetime. So we're going to look at a number of different variables over here. The first one is a career batting average, which is basically the amount of hits that a player has over the amount of opportunities they have to hit the ball. Then we're going to go on to career salary. Um, this is the amount of money that they make over their entire career. Uh, eventually we're going to go to career at-bats, um, which is the amount of opportunity they have to hit the ball. And then their career hits, which um, is the amount of time they hit the ball and they pass first base. But this doesn't count if um, they walk via getting hit with the ball or um, getting walked. Um, eventually we're going to go to career games, um, and that's just the amount of games that they play in their entire career and the average dollars that they earn per game. We predicted that there would be a big correlation between the batting average and the amount of money that they make um, for their lifetime. So. So the way that we gathered the data um, is we took advantage of um, the R database. Uh, it's called the Lawman database. And basically that's baseball statistics that have been collected f over a period of about 200 years um, for all sorts of variables um, with baseball statistics. Um, but we just merged some of the data banks in order to get um, batting average. Um, and we computed that from hits over at bats. And then we also wanted to take into account a couple of the things that would um, make um, a sort of a bias for the data um, because we wanted to make sure that we weren't just um, taking data and then just seeing trends that weren't actually there because there were um, effects of inflation, effects of the fact that there's um, a ton of information density in the past recent years rather than in the 1800s um, and that um, we don't uh, make a mistake because of um, the fact that um, some players play a lot more games in their career than others do because of um, they just simply stay in the professional leagues for a longer amount of years. So the way that we did that is we, we computed the amount of money they earned over their whole career, and then we divided that about um, by the amount of games that they played in their whole career so that we came up with a statistic that's called dollars per game, so it, which represents the amount of dollars on average they earned per game when you take into account their entire career. Um, and we thought that that would um, get rid of the uh, issue with both um, longer career lengths and then that would also take into account some of the inflation that occurs. Um, uh, there was not really an ideal way to get rid of the fact that there's a lack of information in the 1800s and the early 1900s, um, but we just wanted to uh, take note of that. Um, uh, so some of the data that we collected, um, we showed a histogram of uh, the normality of uh, the average dollars earned per game. So you can see that there's slightly skewed to the graph. Um, there's a high end of people that have earned a lot of money. And there's the data points that are on the low end of things. Those are probably contributed mostly from the players that played um, a long time ago. Um, but you can kind of see how there's a large variation on the high end of the pay scale. But with things like batting average, um, that's not necessarily affected by time as much. So you can see that there's a fairly normal distribution for the batting average um, and that the average player is somewhere between 0 0.25 and 0 0.27 for their batting average. And then we plotted some uh, correlation graphs, some scatter plots. Um, to show the correlations um, to be whether, to find out whether or not they were linear or not um, between career at bats and the salary, uh, career at bats versus the number of games that they played, and then the batting average versus the amount of dollars that they earned. So this top graph and this lower graph are two different ways of looking at the same thing. Um, one that's taking into account the fact that some players played for longer, and another for the fact that some. Um, whereas the career for salary. The salary for the entire career, this is getting messy. Um, we can edit this, that's okay. Um, and this was this one does not take into account the fact that um, some players played more games. 
Um, so just a quick look at some of the data um, and the statistics. We can see, uh, see a lot of the trends between the certain variables. Um, but the most important thing that you can take away from this is the fact that we calculated a confidence interval and we can say that there were, we are 95% confident that the true population cor correlation for the um, career batting average and the average dollars earned per game is between 0 0.225 and 0 0.556, which is somewhere between a really weak and an almost moderate correlation. So we calculated R and R squared and the R-squared calculation shows that there is actually no correlation between the two variables. We made a scatter plot, and it suggests the same thing, because the line shows that there is no linear regression between the two variables, and the data points are randomly scattered, so there is no pattern. We also made a normal QQ plot, which shows that we can trust the scatter plot. The normal QQ plot also shows that the assumptions of the linear regression are met, and that the distrib distribution of the variables are normal. Then we performed a hypothesis test to see if there was a correlation between career batting average and the average dollars earned per game. Our null hypothesis was that the true correlation is equal to zero, and the alternative hypothesis was that the true correlation is not equal to zero. We then calculated the t-statistic, degrees of freedom, and p-value, and through these we found that the correlation is 0 0.406, which is, a very, which is a weak correlation. Then with this, we reject the null hypothesis because the true correlation is not equal to zero. So we've basically thrown a ton of information at you, and we just want to sum things up um, really nice and, and easy for you guys right here. So we were actually wrong in our initial assumption that the players uh, who had a better batting average made more money we conclude that there's no correlation or a very weak correlation that um, the batting average has anything to do with the amount of money that they make. Um, on a side note, we concluded that there is a correlation, but it's very minimum, um, between the batting average and the number of games that a player plays in their career. So um, we reject our null hypothesis. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.